not sure if the next uh, presenter is is here. Is uh, Banata, Dr. Banata Ashar? If not, uh, we're going to go to the next uh, talk on mesh fixation compared to non-fixation. Um, Pankaj. Here I present a uh, prospective randomized control trial of uh, mesh, fix uh, mesh fixation compared to non-fixation in total extraperitoneal ingual hernia repair. I have nothing to disclose. In spite of a few RCTs and retrospective studies demonstrating safety of non-fixation of mesh in TAP, it is yet to become a recommendation during TAP. To strengthen the level one evidence, a RCT with a two-year follow-up was planned. It is a prospective randomized control trial of 120 patients and the trial was registered in the Clinical Trial Registry of India. It's uh, done in a rural hospital over a period of three months and after taking the ethical committee clearance and the return informed consent from the patients. Individuals above the age of 16 years diagnosed with a primary unilateral or a bilateral reducible lingual hernia were included in the study. Obstructed, strangulated, recurrent hernias and patients associated with hernias, history of previous lower abdominal surgeries and uh, those who unfit for anesthesia were excluded. The primary outcome is the recurrence after second year and uh, the secondary outcomes we have taken, the seroma formation, urinary retention, a resumption of the uh, normal activities and postoperative pain at one in uh, uh, the 24 hours, one week, one year, and uh, two years. It is a random incision was done with a concealed location before the surgery by taking the drawings from the box. And we used to use, with the help of the two monitors, the surgeon stands the opposite side of the uh, hernia. We used it with the three uh, um, trocars in all in the midline. I used the zero degree telescope and the gas insufflation for uh, making the space. And after the complete uh, depertalization of the lower abdominal wall, we put a uh, mesh of size 15 to 10 to 18 to 13 centimeters, depends on the size of the abdominal wall. And uh, in the fixation, we used uh, two tackers. One is in the lacrimal ligament. The other one is just above the anterior superior lac spine. And postoperatively, the analgesics were given for four hour, uh, 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 diclofenac injection after four hours, antibiotics, uh, three parenteral uh, doses, and the patient discharged the next day with the oral antibiotics. The pain scoring was done with the visual uh, pain and lock. And the follow-up was done with the baseline characters by a surgical resident, intraoperative data by the surgeon, and the postoperative parameters by the nursing staff. The blinding was done as, apart from the operating surgeon, all the nursing staff, statistical team, and the persons analyzing the data were blinded with regard to the fixation of the mesh. And the statistical analysis was done with the, uh, the Fisher X text, and uh, the continuous outcome were analyzed with the man whitney u test. This, the the follow-up was done. Um, uh, the total number of the patients randomized, uh, one out four patients, 16 patients were excluded. And one month follow-up for 100 patients, one year follow-up again for 100 patients, and uh, two year follow-up was done for 83 patients. That the mean follow-up of 26.2 months. The results, uh, the, all the hernia repairs were performed under spinal anesthesia. No conversion to general anesthesia or open or tap repair was done and none of the patient had urinary retention or recurrences. And this is the result. There is no significant difference in all the, the, the two groups comparing the pain, xeroma, or uh, the hospital stay and return to normal activities. So the results uh, shows that there is no significant difference in the mean pain scores at 24 hours, one week, one month, one year or two years, and uh, hospital stay or in the mean number of the days to resume normal activities or seroma formation. So how the non-fixed mesh remains stable in tap repair is because of the sandwich effect and the tissue incorporation. This is a small video. I don't know whether it is working. This is the main, main, um, main point uh, in the, in the um, dissection is that we have to make a space in the rachets so that 
the two to three centimeters of the mesh, the lower end of the mesh is sandwiched between the pubic ramus and the peritoneum. And the same line of the mesh, we have to do the lateral dissection of the deperitonization of the uh, uh, lower abdominal so that this line will continue laterally so that uh, there will be, it is the, the, the most important thing is that the adequate preperitoneal dissection uh, and a proper placement of an adequately large size mesh to prevent the recurrence in uh, TEP. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Hi, Sharon Tofa from Los Angeles. What is the size and quality of the mesh you use, and what do you think of non-fixation with ultra-low lightweight mesh? Um, the, the size of the mesh we designed it depends on the size of the abdominal wall. From 15 to 10 centimeters, some patients we use to 15 to 12, and some patients we use to 18 into 13 size mesh if the very large abdominal wall. And even if it's lightweight, lightweight or the other mesh, this is a randomized trial. We are not using any, I mean, the 52 patients we have fixed and 52 patients we haven't fixed, whether the type of the mesh. There's a question over there. Hi, very nice presentation. I'm Amit from Baltimore. Uh, I had two questions. First of all, why did you exclude the recurrent hernias, like TEP being the gold standard for recurrent hernias? It could have been very uh, useful. And secondly, for the observation of the features, you had residents for pre-op, surgeons for intra-op, and nurses for post-op. Uh, don't you think that the standardization between these three levels of expertise would be different? Thank you. Uh, the first question, uh, the reduced, uh, the recurrent hernias, usually we, we may need a fixation because we don't want to take chances for the recurrent hernias. So we may need, because uh, in our center, most of the patients, uh, almost more than 95% of the hernias, we are not fixing it uh, for last 15 years. We have uh, closed almost uh, 6,500 uh, uh, endoscopy hernia repairs, and uh, most of the hernias we are not fixing, but the selectively we are fixing. The one of the selection criteria is the recurrent hernias. If it is recurrent hernias, we may fix it. So that's why we haven't included uh, the recurrent hernias into this study. The second one, the main uh, thing we are analyzing is the uh, visual pain low uh, uh, pain score. Uh, that is usually the sisters are along every, every four hours, they are looking after. So that's why the surgeons, uh, the residents are not allowed to, I mean, or the, the sisters are uh, uh, done the work. Did you look at the size of the hernias, whether these were congenital or acquired hernias, and could you, could you or did you make any um, determination if that had any effect on whether you fixed the mesh or not? Um, and no, I, I actually, in this, we haven't taken that into consideration, whether the size of the hernia or direct or the congenital that we haven't taken uh, here. Uh, usually, um, uh, it is the size of the, uh, the, the mesh we are. If it is a large hernia, we usually put a little more larger size of the mesh uh, that we use, and not the, uh, the, the fixation. Did you have uh, previous experience with the non-fixation technique, or is, is your learning curve on that technique reflected in this data? And no, we are, uh, as I told, uh, we are uh, doing uh, almost all the hernias non-fixation from the beginning itself. Mainly in our country, it is the cost, because the tackers, it is very costly. If you use the tackers, uh, almost 10% of the, uh, the whole surgery cost still comes. Mm -hmm. That's why we have started it with the, the spinal anesthesia without fixation. And again, I want to, as I started earlier, uh, this is just want to uh, compare with the open technique. Uh, because uh, when we are doing, a, when we are going for a new technique, uh, uh, then the open technique, because open uh, hernia surgery we are doing very nicely with the under spinal anesthesia or the local anesthesia without doing all these things. So I just want to see that, I mean, the same uh, criteria we can apply for uh, the laparoscopy hernia also. So I started doing the uh, under spinal anesthesia uh, without uh, fixing the mesh. It is uh, the, the, the dissection of the space and the use of the proper placement of the adequate size of the mesh is more important than the fixation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you, did you have one more question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. My question is, uh, you mentioned this was a rural hospital in India. So my question is, uh, what kind of activity restrictions did you place in these patients who were uh, presumably laborers or, or agricultural workers? Most of them are laborers. Most of them are working the, the uh, layman who is doing uh, hard work. So 
So do you, what, what kind of instructions do you give them for after surgery as far as? After a week, as you said, uh, uh, as shown, the, uh, this is seven days, they are doing the normal routine activities, by, but they are allowed to do hard work after three weeks. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.